God is the God of hope. He's the God of restoration. And his arms are open wide for you to experience all that he is today. If God did it then, our God can do it again now. You may think it's over. Others may say it's over. But with our lives in God's hands, it is not over. The love of Jesus liberates our souls, steadies our feet, and gives us a hope that can never be taken away. Good morning, Faith Church. Anybody happy to be in God's house today? Come on.
this morning, Lord, and fill this room.
come a day that we know the scripture speaks of when every knee will bow at the name of Jesus. Every knee will come into submission to him. Every knee will recognize that God is God, his son is God, the Holy Spirit is among us, and we are to worship them. But you know the great thing about serving God is we get to do it before everybody else has to do it. We get to do it right now. Can we give Jesus a hand today? We love you, Lord. We worship you, oh God. We exalt your name, oh Lord. We exalt you, God. We exalt you, yes, God. Oh, what a great day it is. How many are happy you came to church today? Come on, it's a good day. So grateful. Hey, can we welcome everyone joining us online, our family online, we love you. Come on, let's give them a hand. So grateful for you, we celebrate you today. You know, as we come and we do worship God with our whole being, our whole hearts, some of us are taking steps and stepping into what scripture calls the sacrifice of praise. What that means is sometimes worshiping God isn't easy. How many here would say, you know what, I, I felt God's challenge in my, in my relationship with him where he invited me a little closer, but it required a little less of me. Anybody ever had to require that a little less of me, a little more of you, Jesus, right? We would come in to worship God. Sometimes we don't always want to worship, but it, we, we say, God, this isn't about my want. This is about your worthiness. And so we worship him and we give to him and we worship and he honors us just with our finances as well. And every week I do mention this, and some of you may think, man, why are we always talking about money? Because Scripture speaks often not about our worship, it does, not just worship, not just giving and serving, but it does, not just love to one another, but it does. It also speaks about our finances, and it does. It's a part of the whole expression of a believer. And so we come and we give and we serve. And God honors our giving just like he honors the giving of your worship to him. He honors your giving. So I want to remind us today as we prepare our hearts to worship God with our finances. That God is a God of promises. 
As we worship, he says, he who draws near to me, I draw near to them. He says, as you seek me, you will find me. He has these promises all throughout his word. He also says, as you give unto me, I will give unto you. But we do it out of our love for him. How many of you love Jesus and love the Father? That's why we do it. But when Jesus established the church, he created the local church, and we created an opportunity for us to give to him through our local body which is the storehouse. The storehouse of our New Testament church is where you receive your food, where you receive your new nutrients as the body of Christ together in one, underneath one banner as a local church. And the scripture says that when we, when we bring our tithe and our offering, out of Malachi it says this, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's army, I will pour open the windows of heaven for you and I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it, God says. Put me to test. He also affirms his promise of giving out of Proverbs where it says this, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. God has a promise for everything he invites us to do. He is not a God that demands and then says, okay, you got to figure out what you're going to do. No, no. He makes, he, he gives us this interaction partnership. As we do this, he does this in our lives. So we're going to pray for our tithe and our offering today. There are boxes around the room you can move to and give, or you can give online or by text. But I would not be a good pastor if I didn't share with you what God says about giving today. So if we can, if you can just hold your hands up, just represent everything that you are and the finances God allows you to make with your the works of your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray today as we give to you, whether it was earlier this week or later this week, but God, we take this moment to say, God, I give to you this portion of my finances. And by doing that, I do it as an act of worship. It's telling you, God, that I recognize that my gifts, my abilities, my, my, very, my very body belongs to you. Nothing I created on my own, you gave it to me. And so today by that of which I made finances, I also give a portion to you that says I worship you, I exalt you. But God, I wanna thank you for your promises that says as we engage our faith with you, you engage your blessing to us. And so Lord, we thank you that you are the God that blesses what we give when we give things to you, when we give our lives to you, when we give our finances. You bless this offering, bless our people. May we prosper in the name and in the will of you, Father. In Jesus' name we all say, amen, amen. Love the Lord this morning, church family. We serve a good God. Would you take a moment, turn around, wave at somebody, and smile real big. Biggest smile you got, just yell at somebody this morning in a good way. Just yell at them. Say, I love you. Good to see you.
Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, can we welcome everyone joining us online, our church family? We celebrate you today, grateful for you. So we're continuing a series that I titled Churchology, looking at us as a church and us as individuals, as the ones who are called by God to be his church on the earth. And we believe that we are called to be a part of a local body. We're called to, to be a local body corporately, but then individuals in our lives and how we live our lives. And so over the last couple of weeks, uh, the first week into the series, we, we saw that Jesus actually designed the church, you and us together, us as individuals and us together, to have authority over the realm of darkness. He actually designed us, created us, and saved us to dismantle the works of darkness on the earth. Amen? So you have authority over demonic powers. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven. It's where people usually, oh yeah, I know that, Jesus. He, he then said, and on earth. Somebody say, on earth. So that means the resurrection of Jesus broke all authority of the devil and his demons on the earth. Shattered it. And then Jesus gave that authority to us. We are not victims. We are victorious. Amen? And so that's our role in the earth. And so we want to be the church that Jesus is building because Jesus said in Matthew 16, I will build my church and that church will charge the gates of hell. But the question is, the only way that you're going to charge the gates of hell and tear them down and dismantle them in, in your life and the strategies of the enemy is that if you then are the church or the people that God's actually building. Because if he isn't building us, we, could, we, we can charge the hill all we want, but he said the church that I build will charge the gates. The question for us, are we the church? Are we being built by Jesus? Are our personal lives being built by Jesus? Maybe some of the areas of our lives are struggling or areas that we're not allowing Jesus to build in us. That's our purpose. So we talked about how, how um, churches can grow numerically at times, which is great. God loves growing churches numerically. But it doesn't always mean that Jesus is building the church. But a church that Jesus is building is a church that is growing numerically. And so we want to learn from the Lord. and We want him to build us through this series. Last week we talked about a church that Jesus is building is a church that is built on the word of God. The word of God is our baseline. The word of God is our truth. It's not my passion that, that God wants for his church. It's not, it's not the, the, the church isn't built on, on, on the pastor. The church isn't built on a, on a, a little a niche. The church isn't built on, on this idea. The church isn't built on this book that was written by this guy who had this vision, who went to heaven for 90 seconds, and then he came back and he, and he created this theology, and then we talk about it all the time. That's what, not what the church is built on. It's built on the word and the word only. Amen? So we learned that and we saw that. That the church that Jesus is building is a church that's committed to the word of God in their personal lives and corporately. It's a church that welcomes the proclamation of the word of God. But today as I came to this third message, this week I felt the Lord speak to me very clearly about an area that he wants to address and he wants to gift us in us as a church. An area that many people miss. And if we're gonna be the church that Jesus is building, we're gonna need to receive what he wants to give us today. I, I sense from the Lord very clearly, I want you to talk about this today. We love the first week because we love, everybody wants to pick up a sword. Everybody's got a little Mel Gibson with a, with a blue painted face in them. Everybody's got a little brave heart in them. Like, come on, give it to me. And that's, that's right. That's okay. It's a warrior spirit. Everybody wants a baseline. And that's right. That's truth. And that's, that isn't. But today's question is this. As God leans into our lives this is an area that maybe we're unfamiliar with. He wants to give us something today that many of us in this room are not familiar with. We, we desperately need it. And the Bible says that if you don't have it, the word of God will not 
produce what it could in your life. And so he wants to build you and he wants to build us as a church. And he wants to give something to us today that's maybe been elusive. It's been, it, it, it's, it's been hard to find in your life or you haven't had it for so long, you don't even know you don't have it today. And instead of having and possessing or being in what Jesus is calling us to be in and receive today, we have the opposite. We have what is not from Jesus. And it's robbing us from what God has for you. The opposite of what Jesus has for you is the best way to call it. It's a killer emotion. It's a killer emotion. An emotion that we can excuse at times, an emotion that we can justify, an emotion that we can even spiritualize. But this emotion keeps us from receiving and living in the goodness and the provision and the promises of God's word. And Jesus put it this way. He says out of Mark chapter 4, he says, The worries of this life choke the word, making it unfruitful. The full text says the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires uh, for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. But I sense the Holy Spirit this week very clearly. He wants to deal with this today. The worries of this life. Choke the word, think about that, making it unfruitful. So the word of God, it's, it's production in our life. The, the life giving, the fruit, the, the goodness of it is actually hindered by the worries of this life. This, this word worry here, really, the, the Greek root word is, a, is the word that we would get our word anxiety from. The worries of this life. And if you think about all of our lives today, there's a lot of worry going on. I think if most of us were honest, we would say our worry list is a lot longer than our prayer list. The truth is for for. All of us, many of us, anxiety and worry levels are higher than they have ever been in our lives. We've just, had, we've, we've just moved the, 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 the threshold of what high means, and now we're like, see, it's, we're not too bad. Actually, most of us are double, sometimes triple, than what we were a year and a half ago, two years ago. We are living in a day and age where one of the demonic strategies is to bring forth worries of this life to Christians so that the word of God will be made unfruitful. And a Christian, a believer in a church that the word of God is, is unfruitful in is a, is a church or a people that is not dismantling the gates of hell. And so we are anxious. There is worry about money, health, whatever it may be. Maybe this is a small list, relationships. Our present, what's going on, what's happening, the future, our children's future. Vaccines, our jobs, mandates, the end of the world, the unknown And the list can go on and on and on and on and on. And so Jesus said this, the worries of this life. What is this life? This life. Right now. Can keep his words from bearing fruit in our lives. Can stunt us. Can rob from us. Please hear my heart today. I'm not saying that concerns aren't real. Absolutely, we have concerns in life. 
Absolutely. There are legitimate concerns. And with a concern, a legitimate concern, we put a plan together. We do our best to sort some stuff out. We, 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 we try to figure it out. We, we use the, what God has given us, our minds, to our best ability to address it and how it affects me and my family. We, we, we do our best in my church, my, my people. That's, there are legitimate concerns. Concerns are a part of life. But this worry that Jesus is talking about is a concern. Now hear me today. It's a concern that is hopped up on steroids. It's a concern that has gone haywire. It's a, it's a concern that, that, that actually possesses you. This worry right here that Jesus is talking about that chokes the word is talking about a concern that you control and navigate to a concern that now controls you and navigates you. It is your puppet master where you are no longer in control about this concern or, or the many concerns. These are worries that choke you, suffocate you. And th these concerns that have moved into worry and that have started to control you, it tells you when you can sleep and when you cannot. It tells you when you need to wake up. It is that feeling of anxiety tells you what you can do, where you can go. And worry is where the concern of a circumstance is now dictating, owns your feelings, your emotions, your actions, your demeanor. It's all over you. You're, you're pulsing with adrenaline. And your conversations, you, you have a conversation and, and it's not about actually the other person or what's going on. It's about, hey, what about this? 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 Watch this YouTube video. Watch this YouTube video. What about this? What about this? What about this? And it's possessed you. Possesses your thoughts. Possesses your words. Tells you what to say. It's what is dividing believers. And I will talk about this in another message of the unity. But it is this anxiety that runs high. There's no patience for another opinion. There's no patience for another believer. There's no patience. And we're drawing lines and because we, 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 we got to... We're charged with this adrenaline, and so it's my brother, it's my sister, it's my church family, and when something happens, man, you get the discharge. Wah! Where's that come from? The worries of this life are choking you. The adrenaline, the mind racing, the Google searching, the on edge, the sky is falling and nobody's doing anything about it. Pastor, you do something about it. It's that emotion. And these, church hear me today, are weighing us down. The concern that passes into the anxiety realm doesn't go away. And for this to remain in our lives, in our church, in our families, means we will miss what God has for us. Listen, I'm not standing here today telling you about a problem you've got. And I just wanted to talk to you about your problems today. I'm talking to you from my own heart. I've got it. You've got it. The worries of this life. Anxiety of this life. We're all there. We're all there. We're all there. We can spiritualize it and say, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm just you know, you're always praying. Come on, I'm not I'm worried. Okay. But we're all there. It's the stuff of life. Life happens. It's, 
It's not perfect. And here's the comforting truth as we are all being confronted, maybe even convicted by this aspect today. Here's the beautiful thing. I want you to catch it today. Jesus knew we would be there. Jesus knew it. So hey, hang on, before you start beating yourself up and being like, oh, I'm a fake. No, no, hang on, hang on. Jesus knew we would be there. And because he knew we would be there, he gives us a promise. He knew we'd be there. Listen, there have been moments in my life that I have, I have desperately clung to this promise that I'm going to share with you in just a moment. In the wee hours of the morning, and the tossing and turning, and, the, and being, being woken up in the middle of the night with something happening right here. And saying, what in the world? How come it feels like what's happening here? What's happening here? I don't even know what's going on. So like any good person, you Google symptoms of this. And then you're like, I'm dying right now. This is what's happening. And I Google it. My left arm's taking, what in the world is happening? Three o'clock in the morning. Anxiety attack? I don't, I don't have anxiety in Jesus' name. I rebuke that. I'm not walking in that. But man. Well, I'm up at 2.30 in the morning with this weird thing that I, I'd never felt before in my life. Worries. The pressures. The feeling overwhelmed. The demand for my life is the demand of ministry, the demand of, of stepping in and leading a church. Where some people like you, some people don't. Some people leave and some people come. Relationships strained that people used to love to see me. They don't like me anymore because I made a decision about color of a wall in the church. <laughs> being hurt, being, I don't understand. And then you move into just life, family and kids and what about this? And, and if that's not enough, then you step into a pandemic so just for me, Jason, what are you going to do, huh? What are you going to, you know, yeah, I can't believe you shut the doors on the church. You, you can't, no faith. I can't believe you opened the doors of the church. No faith. You, hey, I, I, what do I do? <laughs> Worries of this life. We all have concerns. Relational concerns, marriage concerns, our children concerns. God, what, what's happening with, with my child? We have concerns, friends, I want you to hear me, that we don't have a solution to. And so we think the more I think about it, I'll find one. And if I can't find one, I'll think about it again. And if I can't find one, I'll ask my friend. And then we'll think about it together. And Jesus wants to give us a beautiful promise that I run to often in my life. And he says this out of Matthew 11. He says, come to me. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and I am humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why is Jesus saying this? Because he knew we would be dealing with the worries of this life. He knew it. The life that Jesus is building the church that Jesus is building to do great things for him is a person and a body that's familiar with resting in Jesus. Familiar. 
This is not a rest. Jesus isn't talking about a rest that I just need a week on the beach, though that doesn't hurt. But that's not what he's talking about. It's not. This is a different rest. This is not a, a break from work. This is not a, a sabbatical from work. This is not a getaway. This is not an escape of some sort. This rest isn't, you know what, just another, just an extra glass of wine's going to just take the edge off and, oh, finally I can rest. It, this isn't the rest that can be found in a, in a pill. It's not found in, a, in, in any substance. This rest is different because everything else is not real rest. This rest that Jesus is talking about is a rest that can sustain you and can remain no matter what is going on in our world and in life. Anything that's going on around, this rest is from Jesus. And it can be maintained and you can find it in the middle of chaos. Jesus on the Sea of Galilee, he gets his disciples in, he goes, hey, let's go to the other side. They do, they get out in the middle and the storm kicks up and the waves kick up. And the disciples say, we're going to die. And they're worked up. A concern, man, this is a, this is a, this is a storm. This is, that's a concern. Let's make sure we get everything right. Hey, make sure this, that's a concern. We got to be doing that. But then it went from that to Peter, James, and John. I love you. We're going to die. Before we die, let's check on Jesus. Jesus, where's Jesus at? How come he's not freaking out with us? He's asleep. Jesus was resting in the middle of chaos. This is the rest Jesus wants to give us, and he promises us. Now listen, this, is, this rest is not about escaping. It's not about somehow not having to deal with the demands and the pressures of life. No, no. This rest from Jesus, he says, come to me, means he will, he will give you rest in the midst of the demands and the pressures of life. And so the invitation from Jesus today for you is number one. He goes, hey, listen, come to me. Come to me. Come here. Come to me. But Jesus, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I got I to figure it out, Jesus. I got I to go do. Can, can, can you come to me for a second? Listen, Jesus isn't inviting. He's not saying, hey, listen, I want you to come to me. and You, you better fix your emotions. He's not bringing yourself. Hey, come here. Come here. Knock it off. Come to me. Get out of here. Don't do that anymore. That's not what he said. It's not like he's, he, he doesn't say, come to me like the, the person who's flailing in the water. You know, you see it sometimes on movies and, and someone has to be like, stand up. You're not drowning. That's not what Jesus is saying here. He says, come to me. It's not, a, it's not an invitation. You better come here so I can, I can make you grovel for your mistakes and then, I'll, then I will pardon you. Now, it's not an invitation to, to, hey, come, hey, come here, come here, come here. Change your thoughts, will you? Okay, now go on. Change your emotions, can't you? Go on. Stop being angry. Stop being amped up and filled with adrenaline. But knock it off. Get a hold of yourself. Stop Googling, okay? Like, come on. That's not what this is. This is an invitation from Jesus He says, come here. Come just as you are. Come with your anxieties, with your worries, with your doubts, with your... Come here. This whole invitation of... Who, who, is, who, who is this invitation to? Well, we see it in Matthew 11. If you'll put that back up. Come to me, all you... 
Listen, that's, you, you, that's a place for you to put your name. Matter of fact, let, let, just put your name there. So come to me, Jason. Say it again. Come to me. Come on, say it better. Come to me. You put your name right there. Who are weary and burdened, I'll give you rest. Come here. Come, come here. You know, when you read this invitation from Jesus, he says, come to me. To me, when I read that, what it said to me is there are times that we are not in the right place. We have strayed. We have drifted. We have, we have, been, we have been overtaken by the worries of life. We have moved from concern to anxiety. We've wandered from our place of rest in him, from our trust in him, from trusting. And, Lord, I know that you work all things together for good. And I don't understand, but, God, I trust you. And to, Lord, hang on, I don't have time to be with you. I don't have time to rest with you. i got to figure this out. And I know a guy who really knows what's going on. We say with our lips, hey, God's in control. The actions of our life are anything but God is in control. It is... It is what has happened when we have allowed the worries of life to begin to choke out the word of God. And now we are, what Jesus says, are weary and burdened, heavy laden. And this, this word weary is, is the word that, that's actually it's something that's brought on after a struggle. It's brought on after a battle, after something that, that was a struggle mentally, emotionally, relationally. Maybe you've, you're feeling controlled and you've been fighting off these things. You feel vulnerable. You feel like you've failed or you've actually failed. Regardless of the why. Regardless of why you are weary. Regardless of why you are burdened. He doesn't say, I will take these types of worry burdens. These, how you got to deal with them. He says, come all who are weary and burdened and heavy laden. Come here. I will give you rest. I will give you rest from the churn on the inside. Listen, everybody has this place of churn. Everybody has it. Mine is right here. Some might be lower. Some might be here. Some might be in your throat. I, everybody's got it. A concern that you, okay, all right, then moves, and all of a sudden, <gasps> the churn. Go, 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 You can't stop it. It's the churn. It's the worries, these things that affect every one of us. Jesus knew it. And Jesus says, come here, and I will give you rest. His rest will give us relief. So with many of us, we're so, we're so caught up in the worries of life. So caught up. And we have been so amped up on adrenaline that we actually think, this is, this is where I want to be. Your eyes are bugging out of your head, and you're like, this, this is it. <laughs> Jesus says, I want you to come here and give you relief from whatever it is you're weary and burdened with today. And what, what relief is, how, I guess the best way to know relief is when a police officer gives you a warning instead of a ticket. Like, oh, okay. All right, that's, uh, I'm good. What a relief. That's, I want, that emotion, that feeling, that's what, that's what relief is. Or maybe you're at odds with someone you love, a spouse or someone really close to you, and you've been struggling and you're trying to work things, and all of a sudden you come to the table of reconciliation, and you apologize and you embrace, and you go, oh, Relief. 
Jesus, Jesus invites you to come and rest. But he also gives these instructions to position yourself to receive his rest. Something for us to do that will give us relief so that, so that the word of God can bring forth fruit in our lives. So that we can actually live, live a life of rest from the rest. Accomplish great things from rest. From trust. From, from knowing that God is actually in control. Verse the saying it and acting the opposite. From believing that he is the God of promises versus, I know that, but i got to figure it all out. And this is, the, this is the next step on what do we do then to enter his rest. Number two, Jesus says, I want you to take my yoke upon you. My yoke. Now, Jesus was, the, the, the modern way when, in Jesus' time of farming was ox, oxen. And they would put yoke on the oxen. When I go to the third world countries, you, you can see oxen many times, two together with a, with a yoke. The best way to describe a yoke, it's, a, it's like a collar. In Jesus' day, it was a wooden collar that fit over them for the purpose of farming. And the plow or the wagon, whatever the farmer wanted to do, whatever their master wanted them to do, they would connect it to the yoke, and it's, it's what they would bear up under the, the weight of the yoke and then pull whatever their master had connected to their yoke. And Jesus says here, take my yoke. My yoke. Be, be fastened with my yoke for you. Jesus came. He saved you to bring you in his family. He saved you to give you a purpose for your life. Before Jesus, you were like a wild ox, wandering. And we think, am I free? I'm just, I'm free. No, you're not. And a wild ox oxen without a yoke is aimlessly wandering, is responsible for their own well-being. They're responsible for their own protection. When, when wild animals come upon it, it he's, he's on his own. You got to figure it out, bro. You're wild. You're wearing your own yoke. Go ahead. Go for it. It has to fend for itself. It spends days laboring for its own needs, its own provision. But when the ox becomes a farmer's ox, it's taken care of by the farmer. It's protected by his master. We are like wild ox at times when the, the worries of this life, and we're on our own and we're fended for ourselves and we're making our, our own way. We, we lie awake at night pulsing with, with adrenaline and with one eye open just in case something will happen. I'm going to be on it. I'm going to take care of it. And we walk around. I got to do it. We're ready. Come on, bring it on. Come on, get, sweetheart, get, come on, get, get the shotgun. Come on, we're here, we're ready. We walk around life like this, all, just pulsing on the inside. I mean, things are going on in our country. I mean, we, we've got our militia form. We've got our freeze-dried food. We've got our air 50. We've got our bunker. We're ready. Come on, come on. I'm just resting in Jesus. Come on. And we're pulsing our, everything. I mean, we're Googling stuff. Uh, ah, see, I knew this. And we're, we're sending each other video. Watch this video. Watch this video. Oh, look out, this video. And, ah, see, our pastor. Listen, I, I'm not telling. I got a, 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 an email the other day how pastors are really, what's happening, they're being infiltrated by, by some whatever. And so anyway, they're being infiltrated. And they're the ones that are going to report the people in the churches. So, so the bottom line was don't trust your pastor. God bless. <laughs> what is going on? Worries, 
of life that have moved to the anxiety world. Obsessive over and over and over and over. It's choking us. Jesus said those worries of life that you are yoked to are keeping you from receiving my promise. There are many, many opportunities for your concerns to move to anxiety. But we are living in a day and age where the world is pulsing with anxiety. And Jesus is calling you, come here. Come here. I want to give you rest for your weary soul. I'm not saying that concerns aren't real. I'm not saying that we aren't responsible for the concerns. What I am saying is that the worries choke out the life, the peace, the joy. The worries break relationship between you and a family member. Over could be theological things, could be masks, could be vaccines. Just go, fine, ha! Even while I'm speaking now, if you're over here, you're like, yeah, you don't know, Pastor, you don't know. You don't really know. I'll send you a video, then you'll really know. I'm not making light of the concerns. But my question is, how's your anxiety working for you? How's it serving you today? How's it bringing unity between believers in Christ covered by the sacrificial, holy, precious blood of Jesus? How's it? Are you talking about Jesus? Are you talking about other things? Worries of life. And Jesus says to whatever you're carrying today, whatever you're yoked to, he says, take my yoke. Matter of fact, this yoke, you were made for it. It fits you perfectly. It's perfect. Jesus made it for you. Come on. Take my yoke. Come to me. Find rest. Instead of adrenaline, find ease. Instead of turmoil, find calm. Instead of a racing mind that's overwhelmed with all the what ifs, take a breath. Jesus says, Come to me. My yoke will make your life easier. The reason why the things that we carry rob us of our energy, our joy, our peace is because they are the worries of this life. They are of the world. And Jesus said, that burden that's heavy, that is depressing, that is weighing you down, that is keeping you up, that is causing your eyes to, to your, your, your whole face says, I'm freaked out because it's of the world. He says, but my yoke is light. Come to me and receive it. Listen, as Jesus gives the invitation, what I love about this chapter um, out of 11, what Jesus is saying, 
It's like he dismantles what we're already thinking about. Yeah, I know, Jesus, you want me to come to me because you want to put more on me. I mean, Jesus, I, I'm, I'm barely swimming right now. You think I, you think I want to go to you and, and, tell, and have you tell me how I've failed or have you, like, condemn me for my worry? I know I'm not supposed to worry, but I'm worrying, so I'm not going to go to you and you're going to tell me I shouldn't be worrying, so forget it. I'll just keep worrying by myself. Like, and he, he, he knows that. And he thinks, we, we think he's a taskmaster. We think he's, he's going to crack the whip. He's, he's going to get me because I've, I have drifted and I'm too. Uh, no, this, you, I love this. Jesus says something about himself. This is one of the only places in scripture that he speaks about him as a person, as an individual. And he says this, I am gentle and humble in heart. And I want you to know that. So you will come to me with all your pain, all your anxieties, all your fears, everything that's driving you and getting your blood pressure through the roof, and you will find rest for your souls if you'll come to me. If you'll come to me. There's a passage out of Jeremiah that actually is it's directly connected to what Jesus is saying here. The people of Israel were doing their own thing. They were, they were carrying their own weight. They were being crushed underneath the demands of what was going on in their life. And they, they, they were making wrong choices. They were, they were crushed under the weight of their own mistakes, of their own fears, of their own anxieties, the cares of life. And they were under a yoke they were never created to carry. And God tells them in Jeremiah 6, he says, listen, you're standing at the crossroads I want you to look, lift your eyes, look. Ask for the ancient paths. In other words, remember when you were resting in me. Remember when you trusted me to take care of you. Remember when you were at ease in your bed at night because you weren't searching for answers online and, and just desperately just consuming. Remember when you could just rest in me. The ancient path. Where the good way is, and he says, walk in it, and you will find, now listen, rest for your souls. I want you to hear this next. But you said to me, we will not walk in it. We're going to carry our own yoke. So you can say that. You can say today, I've carried the load, and I'm going to keep carrying it. Or you can say, I've carried this load long enough. The worries of this life. I can't hold up under it anymore. I need your rest, Jesus. And a life and a church that Jesus is building is a people that are resting in him. The anger, the stiff necks, the... The frustration, the accusations, the speaking without listening, the turbulent waters, the fear, the pain of loss that all of us have had in this season. The changes, the division, our coping mechanisms for our own anxiety, the concerns that dictate my life, the constant churning. Jesus says, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened and heavy laden, I will give you rest. I will do it for your weary soul. Peter says it this way. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares. Because he cares for you. There's an old legend that I want you to hear about of a man who is lost and wandering in the desert and he's dying of thirst. And it's this terribly hot desert and he's stumbling around and finally comes upon this dilapidated shack and there wasn't much in it. It was windowless, it was roofless, but a couple walls still remained and he saw a little shade that he walked over to and thought he could find a little rest from the sun. As he slumped 
in this shade. He's thirsty. His lips are cracked. His mouth is dry. He just slumps there. And he opened his eye and he could, he saw a, a, a rusty pump. An old pump. And so he st- stood up and he staggered over to the pump. And he thought, oh, finally. He grabs the handle, this, this old crank pump, and he starts squeak, 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 squeak. Nothing. He tries it again, squeak, 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 squeak. Nothing. And he turned around to get back to the shade. And he saw an old jug covered with dirt and some dust. And he, he kind of kneels down and begins to wipe off the side of the, the jug. And there appeared to be a label. There was a note on it. So he began to, to read it. And it said this, you have to prime the pump with all the water in this jug. P.S. Be sure to fill the jug again when you leave. So he says, water. So he grabs the jug, pulls it. Sure enough, there's water. He grabs the cork and pulls it right out. Looks in there. There's hot water. There's some floating stuff in there. He's got a decision to make. What do I do with this water? he, He could drink it and survive and maybe satisfy something. But he doesn't know if the water is going to make him sick. He's at a dilemma. But also, if he drank it, he'd never know if anything was in the pump. So he decides to do what the, what the jar says. And he says, well, here we go. And so he pours all the water into the pump, all of it. And he grabs the handle. Squeak, 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 squeak. Nothing. Squeak, 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 and then a drip. Squeak, 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 and all of a sudden, he's gurgled into gushing water, cold, refreshing, life-giving water began to come out. And so he kept, he kept squeaking, and he kept drinking. And he drank it, and he drank it. The cool water, he poured it over his body. He, he kept drinking. His belly was full. He was satisfied. And he filled the jug up again, and he put the cork back in it. But he added something to the note I want you to catch. He said, believe me, it really works. You have to give it all away before you can get anything back. I don't know what's burdening you today, what's owning you, what's taking from you, what's controlling your emotions, telling you how to live your life, telling your heart, your mind, your soul what to fill. But what I do know is that Jesus is inviting you to come to him. And he will give you rest. He's inviting you, take my yoke. It's light. Come find rest. If we can, let's stand to our feet today. Friends, I I felt the shepherd's voice to you to tell you He's waiting for you. He's longing to give you rest. He's longing to remove the yoke that is choking you. And he's wanting to give you his. If your soul is weary from your own mistakes, from your own thoughts, from your own worries, from your own pain, whatever it may be, from your own loss, he says, come to me. If you can, just lift your hands to the Lord and bow your head just for a moment or close your eyes. Father, in Jesus' name, we take the step towards you. I want you just in your mind right here, right where you are, I want you just to 
have an image of Jesus in your mind. And I want you to envision yourself taking a step towards him. Go towards him. He says, come to me. His arms are open wide. And he says, come and I will give you rest. Lay whatever you're carrying at his feet. The worry, the anxiety, the uncontrolled thoughts. The hypersensitivity because of anger and emotions and fear. And so, Lord, today we make a decision that we will trust in the Lord. We will trust in you with our whole heart, God. We will stop leaning on our own understanding. In all of our ways, we will acknowledge you. And so, Lord, today we receive your rest. We receive, just right where you are, just say, Lord, I receive your rest. I receive your rest. remain just in this 
spirit of receiving from the Lord. Just receive rest in the name of Jesus. Receive the peace of God in the name of Jesus. No more striving. No more worry. No more angst. No more sleepless nights. No more numbing it. It's time. Come to him today. Receive it today. Receive his peace. Receive his strength. Just tell him, Lord, I receive it today. I receive it today. I receive your, your rest. I receive your yoke. I receive it today. Lord, I give my life. I put my life into your hands. Lord, I trust you in all these things that I don't have the ability to fix or to resolve. And Lord, I recognize today I am human and you are God. And so I come to you because you saved me. You redeemed me. Oh, I rest in you today, God. Come on, step into his rest. Oh, God. Lord, we step into your rest today, Lord. Lord, we receive from you. Father, today, we respond to your invitation. Not just right now. But we make a decision to respond and to stay right here with you. In this rest, in this peace, in this love, in this care. Today we remind ourselves that you are the one who directs our steps. You are a sovereign God. We remind ourselves today that we are limited with information and knowledge about what it is we're going through, but you are the God who knows all things. And so because we know you know all things, we will believe all things, and we will trust in you. And we will begin to live our lives from a place of peace and a place of hope and a place of rest. Jesus, build our lives and build this church as we rest in you today. Just remain with your heads bowed for a moment. If you're here today and you would say, I don't know Jesus, and if I was to die today, I don't know if I would be saved. Nobody is looking around. If you want to give your life to Jesus right now, I want you to raise your hand right now. Raise it up so that I can see you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Many of you have raised your hands today. Listen, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And we're going to pray with you. Because all of us who know Jesus have prayed this prayer as well. And the Bible says that if you believe it with your heart and confess it with your mouth that you'll be saved. So church, let's pray. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe you did it all in my place. And today, I put my trust in you. I come to you, and I bow down before you. I give you my life. May I follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.